Is one of the great growth stories of all time, Charles River Laboratory, CRL, once again ready to roar? For those of you who don't remember, Charles River provides universities and biopharmaceutical firms with everything they need to discover new drugs, conduct early stage clinical trials, including the lab rats and mice that any potential drug needs to be tested on. Big companies need this too. Companies' tools make the whole process of discovering and testing new drug candidates both faster and more efficient and, of course, cheaper, which is why biotech and, bi and pharma companies are increasingly outsourcing their lab work to Charles River Labs and others like it. Now, here's the thing. This stock ran up 41% last year, then rallied another 15% in the first quarter of 2014. We had faith that it. it was on fire. Then from the first week of April through the first week of May, Charles River dropped from 61 down to 50. And it, stu it spent the next three months stuck in the low 50s, in part because of worries that drug companies were shifting their outsourced research budgets away from the early stage research that Charles River is all about and toward firms that specialize in later stage clinical trials. Worries that proved unfounded when the company reported last Thursday and knocked it out of the park. CRL delivered a 15 cent earnings beat off of an 82 cent basis with higher than expected revenues that rose 15.9% year over year. Of course, they did make an acquisition there. And management raised its full year earnings guidance. No wonder it jumped 5% on the news. So is this stock, which has given you a 50% gain since I first recommended 20 months ago, ready to resume its long march higher? Let's take a closer look with Jim Foster, the chairman, president, and CEO of Charles River Laboratories, to hear more about how his company's doing and where it is headed. Mr. Foster, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you in person. Nice to be Thank here. You, nice Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Jim, I have to admit, I'm kind of torn. Because on the one hand, you say, listen, we are firing on, all, on multiple cylinders. Uh, we're seeing pretty much great growth. You talk about the idea that this is it. Sales growth exceeded 10 percent, first time since 2008. But then you say, look, you know, it could be quarterly. You got to be careful. Don't extrapolate too much. I don't want to not extrapolate too much. I think that you're on the sustained growth path that I remember that you used to have for years and years. Uh, we've got great demand. Uh, it's the best it's been in a long time, both big farmer and biotech. We're still working through capacity, we and the rest of our competitors. So pricing isn't as great as we would like it right. to be. But uh, we're, we're getting full, so right, are our no, competitors. Getting full. We're getting <laughs> full. Our capacity is beginning to fill. Right. And we should see some price. Also, the mix of work is getting a lot better. Right. Explain what it means to be full, because it's clear this is a supply and demand company. Exactly. So we have a bunch of facilities where we're doing drug safety testing. Right. We're looking at the efficacy of drugs and the safety of them. Uh, we built a lot of space in 2006, 7, and 8, and then right. when the economic uh, situation right. happened in 2008, a lot of our clients pulled back. So there's been a surplus of space for a while, and it's right. now it's just filling up very nicely. We don't give the exact right. percentage, but the industry is at about 70 percent. We're substantially higher than that. Optimal capacity is about 85. So we're getting close. Okay, so let's talk about something that's in the news sure. huge, okay, Ebola virus. Now, one of the things that kind of, I know that MAP Pharmaceutical may not want to be one of your guys, but what is very clear is when we have a case where there's a fatal illness spreading like some of us would think is wildfire, we have to go very quickly from something that may not be fatal as a drug to giving it to people. Do we call Charles Labs and say, listen, I'm dialing 1 800 Lab Rap, will you help me? That, uh, which, by the way, is your real number. I know that's I, that, <laughs> that, 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 that is true. Um, we've had some experience dealing with uh, hot infectious agents and, and, in fact, historically have done some safety testing for Ebola uh, uh, drugs, meaning that we're working on whether the drug is safe. We're not actually working with the agent itself, right. just the drug. So, uh, and safe meaning it doesn't kill rap? What does safe mean? Safe means that the, they can get the drug dosage right so the toxicity is not so high that it adversely impacts the animal or eventually the patient. Oh, so in other words, they may know that it kills the Ebola virus, but it also kills the patient. That's exactly right. So they're trying to get, they insert they're the... They're trying to do both. They're and they give the rat Ebola and then they try to figure out what level... No, they wouldn't no, give the rat they Ebola. Okay. Just, they, so they have, they have a drug that they think will be a good drug, and they're just trying to see whether you can get it into the animal's body and be absorbed properly so that it can do its work against the virus if the animal had the virus without causing adverse toxicity. Most drugs fail because they can't formulate it properly. They just can't get the right formulation. So we're helping them with, we're helping many drug companies figure that out all the time. Well, one of the things that I love about what you guys do is you make it so these biotechs, which are supposed to be so speculative, even the Fed said they're speculative, they're not as speculative, right? Because they call you and you tell them, rather than when they spend a billion dollars and it's then no-go, you tell them much earlier whether it's exactly. go, no-go. Exactly. I mean, our business is all about go and no-go decisions. And the acquisition that we just made in April 
uh, gets us way earlier in the process. So we're helping them actually find the targets, design the drugs, and test it in vitro, not in animals. Mm -hmm. So we can say, you know what? This looks like a great drug. Put more of your resources on it to get it to market. Or looks like a lousy drug. You ought to put your money elsewhere. So somewhere along the process, and sometimes it's not until later. Now, are there drugs right now that you are aware of within your system, Charles Ravs, because you're all over the place, where, where I mean, many different countries, where you think that there might be something promising for an Ebola or for some other virus that we're not even worried about yet that we should? Uh, I, wish, I wish I could say. You can't I wish tell, I could, right? I wish I could say yes. There's, there's no way we would, we would know that. And when I call to get lab rats, that's a very small part of your business, it right? but it is a huge catalog. It I is. mean, so why is that? What I mean, like, is someone always trying to experiment or they just should just give it over to you and you do these? Which is cheaper? I mean, it, it, it's, it's a small part of our business, right. but it's how the business started. Right. Nobody produces their own research models anymore. We produce them. We produce them uh, for a at least half of the market, one, out of, every, half of, the one market. out of every two lab animals used anywhere in the world for research is coming from us. It, so that's, it, a big, it, that's a big stake. And we, we think that these big drug companies are research firms, but they have ideas and they just turn the ideas over to you to see if they work? Well, they're, they're doing the early discovery right. or they're having a biotech company help them with early discovery or some university or whatever. And very early on in the process, we will get the drug from them and help them discern whether it's a good drug or not. Well, I remember you as the great, one of the greatest growth companies, one of my first investments, and it sounds like you're right back on track, and there's illnesses like Ebola that will not be solved without the help of Charles River Labs. It's James Foster, Chairman, President, and CEO of Charles River Labs. The company's been in the wilderness for a while because of the companies cutting back. Who are the clients? Those clients are spending again, and there's real need for Charles River Labs. I think the stock goes higher. May have money back after the break.